The tales of both John Marston and Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2 are no doubt considered to be the greatest stories ever told. From the days of the Blackwater Ferry heist to the death of Arthur Morgan and to the life after the gang for John and his family before his ultimate death in 1911. And even though the journeys of both men take the player on a roller coaster of emotions, there are definitely some plot holes that make absolutely no sense in this otherwise pair of masterpieces. Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. If you enjoy the following, you all know what to do. And if you're new here and aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Today, we'll be looking at some of the actions and choices in both Red Dead Redemption titles that, well basically, just left players baffled. So without further delay, let's begin with what we came here to see. And please be aware, as pre-warned at the beginning of the video, there will be major spoilers ahead for both games in the Red Dead Redemption series. How did the Pinkertons keep missing Sadie's letter to the gang? When the gang finally find passage off the island of Guama and return to civilization, Arthur heads back to the last place that everybody was holed up, Shady Bell. Inside, on the dining table, is a letter written by Sadie Adler using the alias of Caroline, a fake niece of Tacitus Kilcore, the gang's postal name. This is obviously to inform Arthur of where the remaining members of the Vandalin gang are holed up. But what doesn't make sense is how the Pinkerton agents, who admittedly return to Shady Bell every day, had missed this letter. If Arthur fails to read the letter himself, a different scenario will play out where one of the agents will find it and read it aloud, only for them to realise that it's a false letter. So why did it take them so long to find the letter and figure out the cover story? I found a letter. Mr. Tacitus Kilgore. That name mean anything to you? No, I don't think so. I've not yet read the case notes. I've been working on a different case until last week. Dear Uncle Tacitus, I do so hope you enjoyed your vacation. Lucky you leaving like that, and you always suggested you were too old for travel. I hope you and your cousins enjoyed yourselves. Me and your grandnieces have decided to take a trip of our own as the place has become so dreary and godforsaken in your absence. We have gone to visit relatives from daddy's side. You are not yet acquainted with them in La Caye, a small village just north of Saint Denis. It's buggy and muggy, but Apparently, neither is too bad at this time of the year. <laughs> Please come see us when you can. Yours sincerely, Caroline. <laughs> it's a trap. So we gotta go find LaKay. That's where they're holed up. Yeah. How can you tell? Even a child could shoot through that balderdash. Keep looking. See what else you can find. How did either Towns know of the Horseshoe Overlook camp's location? After the gang finally gets off the mountains and set up camp in Horseshoe Overlook, the loan shark of the group, Herr Strauss, gets straight to work in lending money to the desperate locals of the region. One of the debtors is Thomas Downs and his family, to which later plays a major role in the life of Arthur Morgan. After Thomas's passing, his wife Edith heads to the gang's camp to pay off what the family owes. But what doesn't make sense is that the gang are laying low trying to evade the law, so it begs the question, how did Edith know exactly where to find the gang? Hello? My husband owed you money. Here it is. Thank you. And your husband, is he well? He's dead. Combination of beatings and sickness did for him. My deepest condolences, madam. Why didn't Jack Marston become a wanted man after killing Edgar Ross? Edgar Ross, the once member of the Pinkerton Detective Agency, later became a head figure in the Bureau of Investigation before retiring after putting down the former Vandalin gang member, John Marston. Several years following this, Jack hunts his father's killer down, finding him hunting south of the San Luis River. But before this encounter, he is introduced to the former agent's wife and then brother, who informed Jack of Edgar's location, believing him to just be delivering a letter. Ross's wife claims that the Bureau won't let him retire in peace, so this proves that they are still in frequent contact with the man, 
So how come, after he never returned home, Jack was never apprehended for the murder? He would have been the prime suspect in the case and still resided at the family home, so they would know exactly where to find him. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, young man. Hi. What are you doing out here? Are you out visiting the lake with your family? Uh, no, ma'am. I was looking to deliver a letter to Edgar Ross. Oh, that husband of mine. That bureau just won't get its talons out of him, even though he's retired. Edgar gave them some of the best years of his life. They ought to let him retire in peace. They'll not rest till they've killed him with worry, and he's such a sensitive man. I'm sorry, I shouldn't get so angry. I don't suppose any of this is your fault. There's no need to worry about him nowadays. Well, where is he? He and his brother Philip went hunting on the south side of the San Luis River. Be careful crossing over. They were saying it was dangerous. I sure will, ma'am. And don't worry about a thing. I'm sure your husband will be just fine. Why doesn't Arthur Morgan infect any of the Van der Linde gang? As we see during the altercation between Thomas Downs and Arthur Morgan during the debt collection, the transmission of tuberculosis seems to be pretty straightforward. A simple cough. You borrowed money from my business partner, Herr Strauss. You owe him, you took the money. He wants it back, what's not to understand? <laughs> Where's our money? I don't have it. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife or your family or something. We ain't your idea of charity. Is that clear? <coughs> Thomas! What are you looking at? Thomas! I said what you looking at, woman. My husband isn't well. If we could just have more. Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money. During the story of Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur Morgan spends a significant amount of time with the other gang members, both back at camp and out in the open world. So how is it that nobody else became infected with the disease if it was passed on so easily? I'm aware that there's a separate theory that Hosea was actually the one to infect Arthur, as he's often seen coughing whilst walking around camp. But the question still stands, why was no one else infected? How you feeling, Jose? You've been coughing a lot. That's the cold. Thank you for bringing John back. Of course. If you enjoyed today's video, you all know what to do. And if you're new here and aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. What plot holes in either of the Red Dead Redemption titles have you noticed? Let us know in the comment section. If you wish to get in touch, you can do so by finding the channel's Instagram page, that's at PhilbyGaming. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you in the next one.